Hey, Ben, Big Rose 31 back here for FSI DFS. I know you're probably asking what happened to McKinley 4 and 2. He is fine. He's just dealing with a couple health issues, um, which um, he needs his voice to do his primary job. So he's trying to save it for that. So um, doing videos at this point is not possible, but he's still helping out, um, building cores, um, talking to people in Discord. So if you um, I want to say hi, hey to him or give him a shout out at McKinley412 on Twitter. Um, hit him up there or reach out to him in Discord and um, say, hey, we miss you, man, and can't wait to see you back doing these breakdown videos. So uh, today we have a really nice slate, the 11-game slate. There's about a three-game slate starting, I think, uh, a little bit earlier on DK, like maybe 635, 640, something like that. I think one of the games is going to rain out, so it's only going to be like a, a two-game slate. So I'm not really going to do much breakdown information on that one. But there is a really nice 11-game slate tonight, probably 10 games because I think Pittsburgh and Detroit is going to rain out. But pitchers aren't great there. Hitters aren't great there. So it's really not a situation where we're going to be on the cost, like wondering what to do with it. It's um, pretty much a, just an easy fade and cross off. A lot of good pitching options tonight, um, which um, not as many – hitting options. We do have Coors Field. So let's just fly around through everything and um, get into it and we'll help you build some lines and get on with your day. So uh, first up, we have, uh, let's see here. It is the Minnesota Twins and the Baltimore Orioles in Baltimore. Uh, Joe Ryan's on the mound. He's had an amazing start to the season up against an Oriole team who in the last 14 days have kind of fallen down to like 14th in K percentage. It all depends on the lineup. But I do think that um, <clears throat> Ryan is a very, very solid option. Probably my second favorite on the slate uh, if you're going to pay up for pitching tonight at, at 9-5. Zimmerman, on the other hand, he hasn't been bad to start the season. There are some Ks in this Twins lineup, especially further on down. So if you can get past um, Buxton, Correa hasn't been exactly lighting the world on fire. I mean, he's got the potential to. Um, and Polanco, but Yoshello, Kepler, Sanchez, you, we know, like, being a Yankees fan, you can strike out quite often. Um, Miranda, there's um, definitely some potential there. So I like both of those pitchers. Um, so in high end and, and in the low end. New York Yankees have won 10 straight, which kind of shocked me. I didn't realize that. I knew they were on a winning streak, but I didn't realize that it was that well. Um, against the Toronto Blue Jays, you have Talon against Manoa. Not interested in Tyon, no strikeout potential. And Toronto usually has a pretty potent lineup there. Yankees against Manoa. Manoa has been very solid to start the season, so I think he can hold them at bay. Um, Yankees uh, disappointed a lot of people last night, only put up um, – two or three runs really a lot of people stacked them it looked like a good uh, situation against Striplin. it just didn't work out uh so i'm don't think i think they're leverage sacks i think uh, manoa might be a more popular pitcher i think there's probably about three other guys that people would play over him but i think he'd be like possibly fourth in line this evening maybe fifth so I'm, I'm really not looking at the Yankees there unless I'm just doing a leverage stack and a dollar GBP. Toronto, I think, against Tyon, I think they can get to him. And I think with the lack of um, bats in really good situations tonight, I think that just definitely they're one of the blue bloods that you just kind of can play um, any day. And I think they'd be my fourth favorite stack overall. Uh, Pittsburgh, like I said, in Detroit, uh, Bryce Wilson, Michael Pineda, not interested in either pitcher, really with the pricing, not really interested in any of the bats, maybe like Baez, because if the game plays a shortstop is such a abysmal, you know, it's either pay up or, or just completely punt. There's really no mid range guy. And he at like four or five is a little bit cheaper than some of the top or op top options. <clears throat> Bedu is like a cheap catcher, but I think he's actually, um, not Badu. No. Okay. I'm thinking of uh, the other one. Badu is an outfielder for Detroit. So never mind there. Barnhart, actually, I was looking at catcher at 2 6 isn't bad. He's got the split advantage against Bryce Wilson, who's not a really good pitcher. So um, if I was punting down on catcher, it might be an option if I'm sure the game's going to play, but I think I'm pretty much just crossing this game off. Next up, we have the Boston Red Sox and the Los Angeles Angels. It's in Boston. It's Noah Syndergaard and Waka. Syndergaard's starting to get some pitches. He really doesn't have strikeouts, but he's a pretty good control pitcher, ground ball pitcher. Red Sox lineup, again, hasn't really been super explosive like we thought they would be, like they were in spring training. So I can see using Syndergaard, but at 9-1, I think there's so many better options. He'd probably be 
my fourth favorite pitcher in like the mid range, which would be like nine, five and below. I'd just rather pay up or pay down. I think he's kind of no man's land there. Waka, not really interested. Didn't even make a board. Um, as I'm not, not a complete fade, but not with someone that I'm really interested in. Even if uh, Otani is out of the lineup here, because he is day to day, I'm still not interested in playing Waka. Waka is a little bit of a very splits one. So um, the righty here are, are definitely in play with um, Ward and Trout and Tani if he plays Rendo and has good VVP against him. So I think yeah, the Angels make my favorite GPP stack of the day. Um, and Red Sox, um, they're not even on the board. I'm just not really interested in them. Their pricing is just so high to take as like even as one offs. Maybe Verdugo at three six, but um, you know honestly, there's some cheap punt outfielder coming up. You, you just don't need to be in that three six range at all. Uh, especially when we go to Coors Field and most of the Nationals, um, some of the Nationals outfielders, Colorado outfielders are in that range. You'd much rather take them in that hitting environment. Speaking of hitting environments, we have the Battle of Chicago. We have uh, the White Sox and the Cubs at Wrigley Field. The weather looks decent. It might be a little bit rain earlier in the day, but it should be dry by um, first pitch. It's only about like a 16 to 10% chance of rain in there. But it looks like winds are going to be blowing in at like 20 miles per hour. So it sets up for to be a really good pitching matchup. So Kopeka for the White Sox with how much the Cubs strike out and the wind blowing in is my favorite pitcher on the slate at 9-3. I think he's going to be my SP1 in cash. It's, it's a debate between he and Ryan. There are some builds where I could get both of them in, but I think I'm definitely leading Kopeka in this situation. So on the other side, Drew Smiley, not a really good strikeout pitcher, not a horrible pitcher. White Sox do have um, some power, especially against a left-hander, but with such a great hitting environment, does that mean that Smiley's a recommendation? No, I think I'm going to fade him. His price is 8-6. If he was like 7-6, probably like lower, I'd probably need him to be like 7-1 or 7-2 to consider him in this context. 8-6, don't want him here. Um, even in a great uh, pitching matchup situation. If you want to roll the dice on him in a GPP, if you're doing 150 max, and by all means, keep him in your player pool. But if you're 20 maxing or just doing like three entry, single entry, not interested at all. Hitting wise, um, not on any one of these. Cubs may be as the ultimate leverage stack, but they would be my absolute last ranked leverage stack here just because of the type of pitcher they're up against and the hitting environment in the field today. Next up, we have the Cincinnati Reds going to uh, the Milwaukee Brewers. Tyler Miley against Brandon Woodruff. Uh, Woodruff has had a rocky start to start the season. It was better in his last start, and this is a really good get-right spot for him. He's only 8,900, so you know I think he's in the mix definitely between Kopeka and Ryan. Um, I definitely uh, ha could have some shares of him just based on roster construction. If I need to go down a little bit, I'm okay. Cincinnati, terrible offense, strikeouts there. Um, definitely like it. Molly, on the other hand, Milwaukee struggled too recently. Um, so I think if Molly is um, pitching there at 6'9", he's a, he's a decent mid-range option. I prefer Zimmerman, I think. Um, but I think Miley would be like the second or Miley would be the second one that I would take in the, the lower price range. Up next, we have Seattle and Houston. Um, Houston got out two way back. I thought he had a couple of days. Apologize for the video yesterday that I missed that, but um, looks like he's back. This lineup is really strong. So flexing, he hasn't had a bad start to the season, but just looking at last year's KBO numbers, he's just not a good pitcher overall. And I think Houston can expose him definitely tonight. So Houston outside of Coors is definitely my favorite stack. And I think a lot of people in the industry are going to be on them also uh, against Flexen. Uh, righties, lefties, doesn't matter. Just set them up. Um, Seattle is still way high priced, almost like they were playing in Coors. I just don't get it. Christian Javier is um, still doesn't have a high pitch count. He's just looks like he's still getting um, stretched out. Uh, not a super high K pitcher, but uh, there are some K's at the bottom of the Seattle lineup. So 
if you want to pivot off Zimmerman or Miley and you're looking for somebody that probably has the win potential, especially on FanDuel, but I don't think you really need to go down that deep on FanDuel. Um, I I think he's okay to, to play there. This is like maybe your SP2 on DraftKings. Um, but other than that, I really like the Houston stack and Seattle. I'm just not interested in um, at their pricing on this 11 game slate. St. Louis and Kansas City, Hudson and Keller, not interested in any of these pitchers. They're not on my fade list. They're not on my playlist. Wind is blowing in slightly. I mean, Kansas City has been horrible, Dakota Hudson, but I just don't really see a ton of upside compared to other people in this price range. Give me Woodruff, Furious, Blackburn, even Syndergaard over him. If you absolutely have to land on him, I, I think he's okay. I might even pay down a little bit for Keller because Keller has actually had a decent start to the season. I think he's going to outscore Hudson. Um, St. Louis can be bipolar. They can put up a lot of runs or sometimes they, they struggle against right-handed uh, pitching being a predominantly right-handed lineup. Their only lefty is like Corey Dickerson and he really isn't um, too much of a threat. Yeah, Edmonds a switch hitter. So you, you have that, but the rest of the guys aren't, and Carlson switch here too, but the rest of the guys aren't great. So the St. Louis offense is good, but like it's not explosive. It's not Toronto. It's not Houston. It's not the Yankees. It's not the Dodgers. So again, love and game slate, just kind of cross this one off. Don't really think you really need anything from it. One-offs, pitchers, anything. Um, I'm just going to kind of move on from that. So now we come to Coors Field. We have Eric Fetty and Jeremy Marquez. Fetty is not a bad pitcher but not a great pitcher Marquez is a really good pitcher and I just really wish he get traded <clears throat> away from Colorado to a contender and maybe you'll see that this season around the trade deadline because I would just love to see him pitch any place else but um not interested in either one today I'm not going to try to get cute on 11 game slate if it was a five or six game slate like last time I think he pitched it was like a four or five game slate then uh, I think he made sense but I'm not playing Marquez here and definitely not Fetty. Wind blowing out 13 miles per hour left field stack both sides of this Washington is super cheap Colorado has been really good at home so just uh, load up on them in your uh, cash stacks and then just move on. Next up we have Tampa Bay and Oakland Ryan Yarbrough and Blackburn I believe this is Yarbrough's first start of the season. I don't know how deep he's going to go. He's only been going like, I think, four or five innings and in, um, extended spring training in AAA, wherever he was, that I heard of. So, But Oakland has a bunch of strikeouts. He, he can get some strikeouts. So I think he's interesting at 5'6". But again, I'd rather have Javier Mahe or um, Zimmerman in this price range. I don't think you need to play all the way down for him and, and get cute here. Uh, Tampa Bay bats, like Blackburn has actually been solid. And I think he's um, probably my, it's really close between Haley and Urias for like my second um, highest medium range pitcher. Uh, definitely a saving stuff of Urias um, at 7-7 seven, seven for Blackburn. He's had a solid start to the season. Not a huge K guy, but he's a pretty good control guy. Shouldn't give up much runs. Tampa Bay does strike out a little bit more than your average team. So that can inflate that a little bit. So. I think he's definitely decently playable, but I'm probably only looking at like maybe 10, 12 really good night, 15 DK points. I'm not expecting him to like get a 30 or 40 here by any means. Um, <clears throat> Tampa Bay bats, like I said, I think GPP, they're okay. Um, I just, they're in my GPP stacks as the third one, just because there really weren't too many options tonight. But um, Oakland, I think is a really great cheap stack. So if um, like Pinder leading off at only 2K, Murphy is really expensive at 4.7. He's the only a, a catcher. So um, if you really want to be different, you can pay up there. He's gets a split advantage, but like Ben and Court at first base is 2K. There's there's a lot of cheap guy Pache at 2K. There's like a lot of cheap guys in this lineup. If you need some punts of guys that are going to start that you can put together that have splits advantage um, here with a little bit of wind blowing nine miles per hour, 67 degrees, not a bad hitting environment. It's not 80, but it's still, again, it's not 45 degrees. I think he's there. I think that the ACE makes some very viable cheap fill-ins in your lineups as one-offs today or a mini cheap stack. 
Uh, San Francisco at the Dodgers this should be a really, really good baseball game. You have Carlos Rodon, who has been a really solid pitcher, but he's up against a very potent Dodgers lineup. So something's got to give. I lean that Rodon's going to come out the winner in this, but you, you never know there. And Urias against a San Francisco team that's kind of watered down, but they mix and match you. Besides Crawford, they're probably going to throw out um, – eight other maybe seven to eight other righties against him and Urias doesn't usually go super deep in the games um I could see him being between 15 and 20 DK points I, I think he's okay there so Rendon I think I'll play in some GPPs just in case he does crush it and put up a 30 against the Dodgers but again I take Kopech I take Ryan and I take Manoa against the Yankees above him in order of priority and safety tonight for paying up and I'm definitely going to play a Dodger stack just as contrarian. I think, you know, they're a good hitting team. I think if they're going to be so low owned, if they go off in a GPP, probably only like a dollar, maybe the $4 um, GPP. I'm not going to go super crazy in it, but I think maybe that could be um, pretty cool if they have low ownership and they actually go off against a pitcher that's really, really good and people aren't playing them. And the rest of the like course only puts up like three or four runs and is not anything exciting. And like some of these other stacks don't go off. I think, Hey, you never know there. Uh, San Francisco. Again, I like some of the cheap pieces against your ass. <clears throat> if you need to fill in your lineup, I think I might flop this here and put like Oakland is my favorite cheap one. And San Francisco is number two, but I think both are pretty good options. <clears throat> so just reviewing things again, pitchers, Kopeka in a great pitching situation when blowing in against the Cubs with a high strikeout team. Ryan against Baltimore, I liked him second. Manoa against the Yankees, a little bit concerning, but he's having a good season. And Rendon against the Dodgers, again, um, the really good pitchers in uh, difficult situations. Uh, Woodruff, I think, up against uh, Cincinnati is in a really good spot to continue to get right and to um, take up this form that we've seen the last couple of seasons. Urias um, against the watered down San Francisco giant up with Jack Peterson's out of there. You get out of there, belt out of there. Uh, a lot of the, the um, big bats that you might see in there. Uh, I think uh, he's viable there. Blackburn, I, I like um, against the Tampa Bay team that uh, has some K's in the lineup there. And Syndergaard, I think is just too expensive, but I think he's playable. Again, I, th I think I kind of like it's Woodruff and then just go over to the cheap side there. Zimmerman, um, if you can get past some of those first uh, big bats in the Twins lineup is fine. Molly, I think, is a, a decent pitcher in his matchup there. Javier uh, might not go super long, but it has definitely a good shot at the win against Seattle and some uh, artificially inflated strikeouts there. And then Yarborough, which um, we don't know how long he's going to go, but the A's team has been just striking out like mad too. And then I said if um, Keller and Hudson might be in the discussion also, but not looking at Fetty, not looking at Wilson and Pineda, I think that game's going to rain out. And then Smiley, even though um, he's in a good um, pitching situation with the weather, I just think 8-6 is way too high to pay him. So favorite sacks, obviously, of course, Colorado and Washington, Houston would be second. Toronto against High Island would be third. Uh, Angels against uh, Waka would be my top GPP one. Uh, Milwaukee against Miley, just the Cincinnati bullpen behind him is, is terrible. Uh, Tampa Bay, just uh, the way they have like some decent uh, lefties and switch hitters against Blackburn, who's not a huge K guy. Um, but at, really in Minnesota, like I, I'm really not super interested in a lot of these GPP stacks. Uh, I think if I'm doing GPP stacks, I'm going to go over and play with the Yankee stack or uh, LA Dodgers leverage stack. Um, cheap ones, Oakland, San Francisco, you, just pieces there you can throw in there. Um, Kansas City has some cheap pieces and Cincinnati has some cheap pieces too, but I don't even know if I really want them. They're just batting so bad. I don't think it's worthwhile there. So let's uh, look at the lineups and we'll get you out of here. So I took um, left-hand side, I took a Colorado stack, right-hand side, if it is a uh, Washington stack. Kopech, like I said, my favorite pitcher. I think I'm going to, if I can get Ryan in there, that's fine. If not, um, Zimmerman, all these cheap guys, I'm going to go with, um, I think we go with Nunez, his catcher there for Colorado. I think he plays over Diaz today. Uh, he has a split advantage. is relatively cheap. 
I'm taking Kron, McMahon, Grichik, and Joe as my core there. Um, for second base, I can throw in the Washington guy, um, Hernandez there, leading off. El Tuve makes a good one off or find a, a decent value guy. Um, if I'm taking the Washington one, I'm still going to probably try to take Kopech as my pitcher. Um, probably punt catcher. There's you know a couple options in the low 2K range there. I want Bell. Give me Franco. Um, <clears throat> see Hernandez, Soto, and and why Hernandez in uh, the outfield. I do not yad yadier. Yadiel Hernandez, I don't really um, want Nelson Cruz. He's just not hitting well this year. It's not the right split advantage. I just, just too much to pay up for him at uh, he's three, seven. And I get uh, Yadiel Hernandez, who I think is batting 360 on the season at with the splits advantage to two, eight. So I'm just going to leave the outfield open. Probably going to throw Chad Pinder if he's leading off for Oakland at two K or Pache in that other outfield spot there and then just i'll figure out like what i'm gonna do with like short stop for the washington one actually minnesota fits well in here too you can get jeffers a catcher if he starts cray at shortstop and then probably even get bucks in there but i'm like a hundred dollars short on like the pitching combination i want so <clears throat> to make that lineup work i'd really to washington and minnesota stack i'd really have to play around with my pitchers to get a combination that i, I really like there so then finally in GPP, even though I think they're fine for cash too, I'm looking at um, Houston here. Woodruff, I think I'll, I'll go with him as pitcher there against Cincinnati. Um, gives me a little bit more money towards my bats because Houston is a little bit more expensive than some of the course bats are. Give me Altuve, Bregman, Alvarez. <clears throat> that should be Brant Lee. He's not uh, some French guy, Brant. Lou. Um, Tucker and Brantley, like, again, sometimes you don't want to fill up your whole outfield with a stack, and I, I completely get that. Um, Brantley is, just always seems decent, consistent DFS. Tucker has really good BPP numbers, so I think I'm going with three of them without two of Bregman, but if you want to throw Guriel or somebody else in the stack, that's fine. Fox from Washington and Coors Field, if he starts as a nice shortstop at 26, I think I'm going to punt there. And then I think um, – you know, it opens up for me to pay up at SP1. Maybe in the GPP, I go Rendon or Manoa, and then um, it gives me a chance to pay up um, for uh, a catcher, maybe Murphy from Oakland, just to be super different. Um, pay up for first baseman, throw Bell in or Cron, somebody at Coors Field or somebody else who I think is a decent one-off tonight. So it's pretty much the builds, and I appreciate you watching. So. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, put them below. We'll try to get back to you. Hit me up at MegaRuler31 on Twitter. Appreciate you watching. Please give us a like. Uh, subscribe to our channel so you know when our videos coming out. Share them with your friends. And uh, good luck tonight. And we'll see you next time.